It's Friday, May 6th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right, just for the hell of it, I want to talk about this. Uh, Sony did an Uncharted uh, mobile app for iPhone and Android, basically. One of those typical console manufacturer makes an app to be a gateway drug for the actual console game app. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those typical things. But I just wanted to, like, show you this and just... And look at this fucking thing. Like, it's one of those situations where, like, I don't really care about, you know, smartphone games and all that. I'm sure most of us don't. Um, but it's, like, just looking at this, it's, like, this game is so mobile looking it hurts my fucking face like look at it look at how ridiculous drake looks like that is this game just looks so mobile game do you know what i'm you know what i'm saying like it just looks so stupid or ridiculous um not that i have a problem with it but it's just like oh my god i looked at it, i'm like this makes my face hurt it's so mobile I'm so mobile um oh my god Anyway, uh, From Software just released a recruitment video showing off some of their, you know, work and whatnot and what they've done over the years. And at the very end of the recruitment video, it shows that um, their next title coming 2017 is listed for certain platforms. And it's listed for PlayStation 4, X1, PC, and PlayStation VR. So From Software's next game is going to be compatible on PlayStation VR, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I believe their next, their next title is a brand new IP. Um, this is only notable because it's, it's a good situation where... Um, you know, it, with all the VR skepticism that's going around, like, ooh, I don't know if VR is, you know, a compelling thing, or if it's something interesting, or maybe it's going to be all these dumb little games or whatnot, but it's like, you know, the, the, the most, the biggest driving force in the games industry is actual games themselves, you know, actual good software, so to hear a big, um, you know, developer like From Software being on board with a possible, you know, virtual reality title is good news, you know, that's, it's, that's a big developer that makes big quality games, so it's, you know, it's good to hear that, um, they're on board, and hopefully more more developers will follow suit and that's that's what's going to drive virtual reality more than anything else not that it's just a not only is it a compelling experience but it's got um you know compelling games too next up in not so kind of gamey news but still kind of you know playstation related the ratchet and clank movie um came out this past weekend it debuted at number seventh at the box office and it um made around 4.7 to 4.8 million dollars um, and of course, if you probably haven't noticed, there's been, you know, obviously there's reviews around the internet and whatnot about the Ratchet and Clank movie. Um, most of the reviews are like mediocre to good. It's certainly not great from the, the, the general consensus. And obviously the movie debuted at a pretty mediocre, you know, uh, listing too. So, um, but this is just one of those situations where this was like such a missed opportunity. Like, uh, I'm sure a lot of people were expecting it expecting the Ratchet and Clank movie to kind of fall exactly in the situation that it's in, where it's like, you know, it was okay, uh, probably not going to make a whole lot of money, but um, just theoretically speaking, like, this movie had so much potential, and it, even more so, Sony just basically just dropped the ball on this one. One of the ma many scenarios where Sony really does not take advantage of their IP, um, you know, Ratchet and Clank could easily be, like, a huge big blockbuster movie and kids could love it it could have been the next zootopia the next disney movie what are you know you know what i'm saying like it's just one of those situations where they just let it go they just didn't care about it um i i feel like you know if sony really said you know listen screw this we'll we'll really invest some serious money into this like i mean a lot like whatever ratchet and clank's budget was fucking times it by 10 you know, actually hire really, really good writers, like, from the actual, from the, you know, from the movie industry, um, actually bring on, like, some bigger names to, to, to play some roles, and I know John Goodman, I believe, was also in the Ratchet and Clank movie, and some other, um, you know, A-list celebrities, I mean, obviously still retain the, you know, original voice cast of, say, Ratchet and Clank and everything, and all the other, um, people that did the voices of the characters and whatnot, but certainly, like, really push for this, really, um, include some other stars, uh, marketing push it like crazy I mean, and that's probably the biggest thing too is that not many people knew this movie even existed or what this movie even was but it's like my god sony you're, you're a game company you've got this great ip that has made a real big name for itself ratchet and clank the movie industry as you well know because sony's in the movie industry um you know sony pictures you know no shit there they they understand how like the, the the business works i mean have these two divisions of sony collaborate with each other really do a big marketing push for this movie i mean this has huge potential um and this movie became say as big as uh i don't know finding nemo like that's just so much money for sony that's such a big avenue for sony and that's going to direct more sales to the, to the game and we all love ratchet and clank that means we could possibly see more ratchet and clank coming from insomniac um it's just like Oh my god, I was like, it's such a missed opportunity, and it's just another classic example where Sony has great, um, 
great intellectual properties and they just don't do anything with them or at the very least they don't use them to their full potential and Ratchet and Clank would have been a perfect staple um, for cinema it just would have been and obviously that just was not the case this time but that's because Sony didn't even try they just did not try and it sucks for our final news story, there's not really a whole lot of PlayStation stuff going on, but there is some Microsoft stuff going on, which of course we'll get into a, get into a Sony twist about it, and an overall um, overarching video game industry theme, which is that, uh, so we all know PlayStation 4 and Neo, that's like a real thing, we've been hearing all these things about it, it's, it's probably going to turn out to be real at some point, we're just waiting on an, an announcement basically, but on the Microsoft side, it's been a little bit hush-hush, but recently now, uh, some, uh, some rumors are coming out about Microsoft and that they will probably do a new console as well. Uh, the details on the Microsoft side are still pretty, like, light-tipped, like, we really don't know a whole lot, um, to the point where it probably not even, you know, we don't have enough evidence to even say that it's really gonna happen or not, um, but there are a few people in the industry, a few sources, a few news stories going around that there is a new Xbox coming, um, a recent insider said that the new Xbox is going to have possibly a new controller, um, possibly a new form factor for the box, uh, you know, possibly a different color for the controller or something like that. Um, again, details are pretty light. Like, we don't necessarily know if it's going to have, like, a lot more horsepower or whatnot. Uh, certainly, that would be um, an easy case for Microsoft as well because the, the architecture for the Xbox One is also pretty simple. They could absolutely uh, be in a scenario where um, they could release a more powerful Xbox and make it very much so a forward compatibility thing like the PlayStation 4 and this theoretical Neo. Um... But uh, what's what's more interesting is that now that we've got the Microsoft you know news stories going around, let's say for example that the, the Microsoft stuff is actually real. Also, um, it's just profoundly interesting that these two big companies had the exact same idea in mind for this console generation, um, because obviously it's not like they were say talking to one another and going, you know what, maybe we should we'll release another console. Will you release another console? Like about two two three years in or something, we'll both announce it. Oh, yeah, because we're both going with easy architecture. Yeah, we'll do forward compatibility. Like, let's, you know, did that conversation really take place between Sony and Microsoft? Probably not. Um, maybe, you know, some rumblings were going around between both companies and, you know, uh, sources were going around, you know, people were talking, you know, people with their ears and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? News travels fast, obviously. Rumors travel fast, especially within multi-billion dollar companies. So certainly they would have heard that way or something. But it's just in incredibly interesting that this industry is going kind of in the same direction um, from from, well, both Sony and Microsoft. I, w I would like to say all fronts, but Nintendo has always been a little bit of an outlier. Nintendo definitely always take a, always takes a very um, different approach with their game consoles, and specifically with the NX. So all the rumors that are going around the NX are definitely pointing to typical Nintendo, which is Nintendo is uh, very different, and they like to take things in a different direction. So Nintendo has always been the, the outlier. But yeah, Sony and Microsoft, you know, um, that they're both at the same console generation having the same sort of idea in mind where it's like the industry has to change a little bit, um, Consoles are becoming dated boxes pretty quickly. Um, they, you know, the technology moves so rapidly. There's larger consumer demand for um, faster upgrade cycles, for um, higher visual fidelity, um, higher frame rates, higher resolutions, PC gaming, and all that. Um, it's all just coming to a. Uh, it's all kind of coming full circle, basically. And if it, like I said, if the, this is, of course, if the Microsoft side is pointing to be true, and this would possibly happen for Microsoft as well. There's also the um, absolute possibility that the next Xbox is like just say an elite Xbox One, kind of like what you know Microsoft did with the previous Xbox 360, which is that it's just a you know different form factor box, uh, probably has higher storage in it. Um, again yeah redesign the controller or something like the actual hardware would still say the same but it would just be a you know redesigned box just like how sony typically does with all all their playstations they redesign the box and make it they make a slim version the you know hardware power is never increased drastically or at, uh, at all really um the components are pretty much exactly the same anytime anytime in the console industry when hardware is like actually revised it's typically like for like uh you know smaller chips uh lower power cons consumption you know what i'm saying this whole idea of a stronger ps4 or a stronger xbox one is completely new for the industry and that's why so many people are taken aback by it one thing's for certain we are going to have a very interesting next year or so i'd say i mean i wouldn't say like you know Obviously, I guess E3 would be um, a very exciting show this year. Who knows really what's going to happen, what's going to get announced. Pe the, the industry insider that 
was from Microsoft is saying that Microsoft will probably announce a major hardware change at E3 this year. So maybe we'll see an announcement from Microsoft. On the Sony side, they're saying that it's not gonna be at E3. Of course, all rumors still. Um, but I think it's fair to say the next year or so for like consoles is gonna be an extremely interesting turn of events. I mean, we got virtual reality for PlayStation 4. Um, we got the Microsoft camp that is also actually, you know, there's rumors going around for them with virtual reality as well. Um, who, like the Microsoft side, we don't have nearly as much firm details. So it, they're kind of a wild card here in terms of what actually turns out to be true. Uh, but we still got, you know, some, some rumors stirring around there. The Sony side, we have some very strong rumors kind of basically all but confirming that there is going to be a stronger PS4. Um, it's just like with VR and these stronger consoles and of course Nintendo, which again, the outlier, they're doing some crazy stuff with their possible NX and what, you know, what they're going to be announcing soon. Um, I mean, it's going to be a very interesting, you know, next 12 months. Like, a lot of stuff is really going to, like, go down. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's about to go down. Um, I just can't wait to see what actually, like, I just, I want to start seeing some announcements here. It's like, the past few months have been nothing but rumor, 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 rumor. Whether you're in the Nintendo camp, Microsoft, or Sony, I can't wait to see what finally fucking happens. Those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. Uh, so, we did uh, do, uh, the, the run on gaming topic was... Uh, it was actually a big one. Uh, our video games considered art. That's like, you know, we've been doing Ryan Gaming for almost over a year now, actually. Like, I don't even know. I don't know. It's longer than a year for sure. But uh, that was one topic that a lot of people always like to submit, you know, our video games, art, stuff like that. that so we finally covered that topic. It's a really good uh, discussion, too. So check that one out and keep submitting topics by all means, because, you know, I might run out at some point at some point. And if I do, I'm going to be blaming all you guys. Um, the Ratchet and Clank review is done. It will be uploaded uh, this Wednesday, probably, which means there won't be a Ryan on gaming. I don't really like to double dip videos. So um, probably not going to be a Ryan on gaming. There'll be a, the Ratchet & Clank uh, review will go live on Wednesday. Actually, if you're a Patreon supporter, uh, Ratchet & Clank review is live right now for you guys early. Just a little present for the people that like to, you know, be a little nice on Patreon. Not trying to play favorites here, but, <laughs> you know. And then that's pretty much it. Gotta wear all that, you know, that Let's Play still going on. Yeah, that's about it. Um, and actually, this is the last, last Let's Talk PlayStation until Uncharted 4 comes out. Finally. Uh, yeah, the reviews are coming out for that game. I guess it's doing pretty well. I guess we'll find out when uh, we can all finally start playing it soon. I'm actually, I'm actually so fucking excited. I'm so excited that I took three days off of work to play it. Um, and I actually got those days approved too, which is awesome. So literally May 10th to the 12th, all I'm doing is playing Uncharted 4. Um, if I finish the story actually and you're on my friends list, maybe we'll do some multiplayer. I posted in the Let's Talk PlayStation community about us possibly doing like a little uh, get together once the game is... Uh, out and everything so actually if you're not part of the let's talk playstation community on ps4 join that too maybe we'll try and uh, figure something out um anyway that concludes this week's episode of let's talk playstation i'm ryan benecki thank you all so much for talking with me and i'll see you guys next friday